First thing I want to explore with you this morning about books are to do with the people who actually write the books. Now, do you know what you call a person who writes a book? They're called the author. Now, we've read this book before, and if you look here, under the title, which says The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and the title we know is the name of the book, underneath here it says, By Eric Carl. Now, Eric Carl is the person who wrote the story of the very hungry caterpillar. And not only that, I've also drawn the pictures, and we'll talk about the person who draws the pictures too. Now, what I'd like you to do is to go and have a look at all your storybooks and see if you've got any books that are written by the same author. I'll show you what I mean. I've gone through some of my books on my bookshelf and have grouped the books together that have been written by the same author and then I can kind of see that there's a pattern to the books that I like and that I found that I like some books by particular authors so if you have some books written by the same author then you might already start to have your own favourite author, the person who writes the books. Now, I know as a kid, as I mentioned this morning, first of all, that my very, very favourite author when I was growing up was Roald Dahl. And that's just five of the books. I think there's another 20 on the shelf for him. And because I liked Roald Dahl, every time a new book came out or I saw a different one in the shop, I knew that if I got one of those books, or if I went to the library to get one, that I would definitely enjoy it because I liked the way Roald Dahl wrote his stories. So I started to put some of these into piles and I noticed that I had a few by the author Jill Murphy. Do you remember the Peace at Last books in school? I love those. Definitely Peace at Last. So I, I found out I've enjoyed books by this author. I've also found out and I know in school we have lots of different ones. We have lots of books by the author Julia Donaldson. I bet some of you have some books by her. And with The Hungry Caterpillar, look, I found another one in the bookshelf written by the same author, Eric Carr. And then over here, got Tom Fletcher and Dougie Pointer. Look, and they wrote a series of books about the dinosaur that poops. And because I liked one of them, I knew that I would like some more written by them. And they're like a series of books all about the same character. And then another author, who we're going to talk about a bit later when we look at the pictures, is a person called Oliver Jeffers. And I've got quite a few of his books, and I know I really like them as well. So in a minute, I'm going to read you a book by Eric Carle, another one, so the author who wrote The Very Hungry Caterpillar also wrote this book called The Tiny Seed and I've chosen this one because I'm not sure if many of you would have heard this one before. So after you've read this book and you've listened to the story go off to your own bookshelves and see if you can group together books by the same authors and see have you actually got your own favourite author so when you go to the library next you might go oh shall we see if there are some more books by that author. Right hope you can find some favourite authors. Shall we listen to this story first before you do that? So here is the book that I've chosen by the author Eric Carle, the author who wrote The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And the title of this story is called The Tiny Seed. There we go. It is autumn. A strong wind is blowing. It blows flower seeds high in the air and carries them far across the land. One of the seeds is tiny, smaller than any of the others. Will it be going will it be able to keep up with the others? And where are they all going? Can you see the tiny seed? It's this one. They're all flying in the sky. Can you see as well that? The way the pictures are drawn in here, the illustrations, they look similar, don't they, to the very hungry caterpillar. 
One of the seeds flies higher than the others. Up, up it goes. It flies too high and the sun's hot rays burn it up. But the tiny seed sails on with the others. Oh dear. Another seed lands on a tall and icy mountain. The ice never melts and the seed cannot grow. The rest of the seeds fly on, but the tiny seed does not go as fast as the others. There's the frozen seed. There's the tiny seed still going. Now they fly over the ocean. One seed falls into the water and drowns. The others sail on with the wind, but the tiny seed does not go as high as the others. Oh, I think it's this seed that's about to drown. Oh, look, there's the tiny seed, not as high as the others. One seed drifts on down to the desert. It is hot and dry, and the seed cannot grow. There it is, look. The seed won't grow either. Now the tiny seed is flying very low, but the wind pushes it on with the others. You see it over here? Finally, the wind stops and the seeds fall gently down on the ground. A bird comes by and eats one seed. The tiny seed is not eaten. It is so small that the bird does not see it. That's the one being eaten. See the small one over here? Now it's winter. After their long trip, the seeds settle down. They look just as if they are going to sleep in the earth. Snow falls and covers them like a soft white blanket. A hungry mouse that also lives in the ground eats a seed for his lunch. But the tiny seed lies very still and the mouse does not see it. There he is eating, and I think this must be over here. Again, the tiny seed. Now it is spring. After a few months, the snow has melted. It is really spring. Birds fly by, the sun shines, rain falls. The seeds grow so round and full that they start to burst open a little. Now they are not seeds anymore. They are plants. First they send roots down into the earth. Then their little stems and leaves begin to grow up towards the sun and air. There is another plant that grows much faster than the new little plants. It is a big fat weed and it takes all the sunlight and the rain away from one of the small new plants. And that little plant dies. The tiny seed hasn't begun to grow yet. It will be too late. Hurry! But finally, it too starts to grow into a plant. Which one do you reckon it is? It must be this one because that's the smallest, isn't it? Oh dear, look. The warm weather also brings the children out to play. They too have been waiting for the sun and springtime. One child doesn't see the plants as he runs along and, oh, he breaks one. Now it cannot grow anymore. You must be careful where you're walking, must not you, Puffin? The tiny plant that grew from the tiny seed is growing fast, but its neighbour grows even faster. Yeah, can you see? There he was. But look how big the other one's got. Before the tiny plant has three leaves, the other plant has seven. And look, a bud. And now, even a flower. But what is happening? First, there are footsteps. Then a shadow looms over them. Then a hand reaches down and breaks off the flower. A boy has picked the flower to give to a, fr a friend. It is summer. Now the tiny plant from the tiny seed is all alone. It grows on and on. It doesn't stop. The sun shines on it and the rain waters it. It has many leaves. It grows taller and taller. It is taller than the people. It is taller than the trees. It is taller than the houses. And now a flower grows on it. People come from far and near to look at this flower. It is the tallest flower that they have ever seen. It is a giant flower. 
Well, I wasn't expecting that. It was new puffins from a tiny seed. Look how massive that plant is. All summer long, the birds and bees and butterflies come visiting. They have never seen such a big and beautiful flower. Now it is autumn again. The days grow shorter, the nights grow cooler, and the wind carries yellow and red leaves past the flower. Some petals drop from the giant flower, and they sail along with the bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. The wind blows harder. The flower has lost almost all of its petals. It sways and bends away from the wind, but the wind grows stronger and shakes the flower. Once more, the wind shakes the flower, and this time the flower seed pops open. Out come many tiny seeds that quickly sail far away on the wind. So what do you think is going to happen next, Puffins? It's like a cycle, isn't it? The cycle of how the plant grows starts all over again. The seeds will travel and eventually they will hopefully reach some soil and begin to grow. And if they survive, grow into a flower. What kind of flower do you think is that tall and is yellowy? And then in the autumn, all of the seeds in the middle, I think it's a sunflower.